My next adventure in Pakistan was heading to Suwat, which was a five-hour drive from Islamabad. Suwat is a gorgeous valley known for its forests, mountains, and beautiful views. But there was somewhere that I had to stop along the way, at the ruins of an ancient Buddhist monastery called Taktbai. morning guys I have driven into <laughs> it's about to rain um, this morning I have driven into the north through such beautiful countryside actually reminding me so much of Italy just rolling green hillsides and um, tall trees and houses on hilltops there is a Buddhist monastery here at the top of a hilltop so I am currently climbing up 282 stairs to reach the top. It looks really, really amazing view above driving in. Well, it is raining quite a lot. There are these beautiful green hillsides here beside the ruins and a lot of it is reminding me, I don't know, it looks like what you might find in Scotland or Wales. I imagine like the rainy weather and the mysterious ruins and the green rolling hills. This is really beautiful. I just wish that it would stop raining a little bit so that I could film for you guys. Right now I am in the area of the main stupa and this is where in ancient times, I believe 2200 years ago, this was built. The worshippers would walk around the stupa seven times uh, similar to in Islam and then up you can see there's more of it up there. <laughs> this is this is so pretty. Right now I am walking through the meditation cells and they're kind of in this cave. There's all of these doorways that are so, so tiny and little stone rooms that just disappear into darkness and I can go and explore any one of them I want. There's all these bats in here flying at my head. talked by is not in Swat Valley. Swat was formerly a part of the Gontara civilization, and talked by is one of Gontara's best preserved sites. I am now inside one of the meditation rooms, and it's just completely black in here with one little line of light. Uh, illuminating this dusty floor and this is so amazing I feel such an explorer <laughs> this monastery was built during the first century its position on a rocky hilltop protected it from invasion even during the time when Alexander the Great conquered the Gandharan civilization. The monastery operated for 600 years until it was abandoned in the 7th century.
It was only rediscovered around the 1850s, but still to this day, much of the monastery and the town that surrounded it remains unexcavated. For thousands of years, pilgrims have been coming here from China, Buddhist monks. Um, they would come here sometimes just on a pilgrimage to come and worship, and also um, sometimes to stay because this was the site of a university for Buddhist monks. There's, you know, living quarters for the monks, there's kitchens, there's places where they would eat. So you do get a sense of the daily life of the monks. Something that is so fascinating and crazy about this place is that so much of it is still undiscovered discovered so much still has to be excavated only 35 percent of the area has been excavated and uncovered so there's still a lot of mystery about this place and so much more in these hilltops you see these crumbling castle sort of structures <laughs> woods right now, um, kind of beneath the ancient ruins, and um, it's so cool because there are all of these ruined buildings up in the hilltops above me right now, and it's kind of crazy because from where I have come from in Pakistan so far, and now coming to this landscape, this is classified as a mountainous jungle, so we have seen quite a few different landscapes. We have come from deserts and seas to jungles and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just kind of strange when you've just been in the desert and now you're in the jungle just by driving. <laughs> pretty cool. You can have chai anywhere you want in Pakistan, even in the ruins of ancient civilizations and the jungle. Okay, back in the car now. It is very hot and humid outside. Now I am headed straight to Sawat, which is about a two hour drive away. Driving along the most beautiful roads right now. They are so winding through the mountains and the town are all below and it is so, so beautiful. <laughs> Even driving into Swat was just breathtaking. I don't think it comes across on film at all how stunning this drive was. I eventually put down the camera and just enjoyed the views that this area is famous for. It was so beautiful, it made me a bit sad because I knew that I wouldn't get to have much time here. But it was either two days or none, so obviously I went with two days for now because I had to see this place. This place made such an impression on me in such a short amount of time. Sawat has a rich and long history. It's no secret that it's gone through dark times, and yet the people of Sawat remain incredibly welcoming and open. Everyone that I met was so genuine, so full of life. by the river and it is just so so pretty my memories they belong to me the ones that you could never steal so
um, one of the guys from that group had just gotten married, so they were celebrating. I was standing here, and then they pulled up a little bit down the road and just ran out of their car, the music on, and started dancing, like all within the space of maybe five seconds. So. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really love about being here in Pakistan and the people here because everyone is just so ready to have fun at like a moment's notice and sometimes like you don't even really get why but <laughs> it's great. <laughs> that was so fun. Good morning guys. Today I am walking around the small town of Islampura. It is a historic um, small village in Sawat. There's just all of these narrow uh, streets and passageways that I'm walking down right now. I don't really have many plans. I just want to walk around and see. Oh, this one has a ceiling, this road. Then you go over here. <laughs> As I am walking down these little corridor sort of streets, if you hear that right now, that is the sound of them um, weaving and I'm going to try and find a place where I can see that because it looks so cool. As you can see, all of these streets are immaculately clean and uh, it's really nice. The birds are singing, the air is so fresh over here and this is um, another of the places where everyone is weaving. And then you come out of the winding little streets and you see the hills and the green mountains over there. where they are making all of these handicrafts and that is the noise that you hear behind me of them weaving. It is just such beautiful, intricate work that they are doing using their hands and their feet and there's a bunch of them all over here. admit that on this trip, with it being so short and being surrounded by such amazing people sharing pieces of their lives with me, these are the times when I'm never sure whether or not I should pick up the camera. I left Swa feeling refreshed and inspired, except for my worry that Maybe I hadn't filmed it well enough. Would I really be able to tell you all what it was like? I hope that I have. Either way, I'll be back very, very soon.